Hello, and welcome to Chem 300. My name is Bill Miller, and I will be your Chem 300 instructor this semester. This is an entirely online and asynchronous class. Uh, so you'll be doing all of your learning online. And uh, I want you to know that I am there for you during office hours and during and to answer your emails. And if you ever send me an email during Monday through Friday and you do not hear back within 24 hours, please feel free to email me again. I will never mind. In fact, I will thank you for the reminder. Let's look at the Canvas site for this class. And uh, we're starting on uh, the home page, which is also the landing page when you look at the Chem 300 Canvas site. You'll see it has some instructor contact information, my email address, and uh, a phone number, though uh, email is the best for getting in touch with me, and emailing through Canvas is uh, really the best. Uh, and to do that, you would uh, go over to the inbox uh, and send me an email. It's got my online office hours right here. You can see the times that will be available. And like, uh, and you never have to make an appointment. I'm always there unless I send you an announcement that I'm not, which happens every once in a while. But please plan on stopping by to get your questions answered or just to say hi. The textbook can be found here. And you're looking for Chem 300 Beginning Chemistry at the Chem Libre Texts site. Uh, and then even before the course starts, and now that we're into the course, there's a bunch of information here, including the syllabus, including tips for success, and um, examples of student videos for class. We'll go over that in a minute, too. One thing I will ask is that uh, you turn in your assignments as PDFs and as one PDF per assignment as much as possible. Some of the assignments may have more than 10 pages. And uh, if you need to turn in two for that, if you turn in more than one PDF document for assignments that require a PDF, you uh, will lose points after week one, just to put that out there. Um, Please do your own work. There's a bunch of information in the syllabus about uh, how you may work together with other students and still do your own work. And still at the bottom of this landing page, since you are taking this class for preparation for uh, more advanced STEM courses, science, technology, engineering, and math courses, I highly encourage you to join MESA. And there's some information here and a link to more information about joining MESA. That's all on the landing page. Let's now go to the announcements page, and these are all on this left-handed menu here. First thing I will say about announcements is that you should make sure that when I post an announcement that you get an email that will keep you up to date on everything happening in the class. Uh, and in fact, I get my announcements via email just to make sure they've gone through as well. Uh, we've got a Consider Joining Mesa, Welcome to Chem 300, and a new video, uh, at least when I posted this, uh, is using a scientific notation on a TI graphing calculator. One of the most important things that you'll learn or make sure that you know this semester is how to use your calculator to solve all of the math for this chemistry course. And uh, yes, just make sure that you get my announcements as emails so you have the latest information for class. If we now go to modules, you'll see that there's a bunch of information uh, about the course, um, including course overview, how to study chemistry, uh, how to study, how to succeed in Chem 300 with really trying, and how to create a PDF and submit it for a homework question. I've got a video tutorial here, as well as printed directions for both the Adobe Scan app and uploading using the Canvas. Oh, so this is scanning and saving uh, using Adobe Scan. A lot of uh, students also like to use the Cam Scanner app as well. Uh, so if you're more familiar with that or you want to use that, please do. If you have any questions, please come to office hours. And then uploading it and make sure that you have uh, verify that you've uploaded correctly. Uh, how to not cheat in Chem 300. 
So uh, I do use anti-cheating, anti-copying measures. Uh, I do belong to at least a couple online sites that I can check your work. Please do your own work. And let me just say, to be clear, I encourage you to work with other students, discuss approaches to problems, ask me for help if you do not understand the concept, and uh, I encourage you to help another student by looking over their work and explaining them the correct approach to the problem. You can tell them the correct formula to use. To be clear, you will receive a grade of zero for an entire assignment if I can see any indication that you have copied and uh, another student's work. And so whenever you do work together, always do the math yourself. Uh, and in fact, if you're working together, have different numbers of digits, significant figures, as you'll see in your answers, just to make it clear that even if you work together, that you are not copying. Um, uh, so let's see. Oh, and another uh, dead giveaway is when you copy from somebody or some place on the internet that uh, you have a nine that is on the page and you put a G or you copy material that is well more advanced than the class that we're doing right now. Uh, anyway, just best to do your own work. If you find something else online and please do find things online, put it in your own words, put it in your own formatting, do the math differently than it is on the page. And any questions about that, always just stop by and see me. Uh, syllabus uh, and the Chem 300 required lab materials. These required lab materials, I believe have to you have to have them by week four. So you do have a couple weeks, but you do wanna get started on it. Here's the Chem 300 online lab materials kit. And then most of the other stuff is less expensive uh, on Amazon, including goggles. And these goggles, uh, I highly encourage you to get them. In fact, I require them for your lab work. Uh, and you will need them for future classes as well. There's a uh, labware kit. And here's a picture of what it looks like and a link to get it on Amazon. Here's a jeweler's scale. And what's most important for this jeweler's scale is it has two decimal places. So I will ask you to show me your scale and then it records two decimal places um, in grams, not ounces or anything else. You'll also need a Color Flame Candle 12 pack. This is, uh, I think, 450 last time I saw it on Amazon. And those are the materials you'll need to complete the labs for this course. Uh, oh, so let's get back there. There's um, lecture lab and homework schedule. There's periodic table conversions and equation sheets. These are the sheets that are actually what I use in CAM 400. Uh, so please have printed copies of all these materials when you do your homework, uh, when you take exams even. Uh, so please have them handy. They'll have all the numbers that you need and all the numbers that will be available to you when you take CAM 400. Uh, information about study groups, that's particularly important because you can get extra credit from doing study groups. And in fact, if you read the syllabus and read this information, you'll see that you can get more uh, extra credit if you're in a study group. Now, uh, here we hit week one starts today. And this class will start on Tuesdays each week and end on the following Monday. In each week, there'll be an introduction. Um, and th these two due dates are what I call to do due dates, you just have to access the page. There's nothing to turn in. Then you'll have lecture outline one, which is due tomorrow by 11.59 p.m. Sign the lab waiver. This should be worth five points. So I'm gonna go revisit that when I'm finished making this video because uh, you do need to sign the lab waiver. You'll have to upload your math prerequisite. Then you'll have a chemistry video and essay and tell me a little bit about yourself. And uh, again, some more information about the labs and a lab safety quiz. And really this stuff is all taking the place of lab for this week. Next week, you'll start with either uh, a lab that is a workshop, which is problem solving, or an experiment. And the experiments don't start till at least week four. We'll scroll down in a minute and see. Then you'll have a homework. Oh, wait a minute. 
lecture outline one, I skipped that. Lecture outlines, you're going to have a handout and the handout's right here. And it's also available as a PowerPoint or as a PDF. You're going to download that or otherwise get access to it to write on it. And then you're going to watch these lecture videos, one, two, three, and four, and take notes on the handout as you do it. Now, uh, what do you have to do for notes? You have to have all of the information that's already on the page, include, except for, <laughs> there's a picture of Shrek on page one, but all the other pictures you have to have. And let's see here, let's take a look at the handout. So uh, you would need to have these pictures and that's why it's best to print it. You'll need to have this picture right here um, and all the pictures that I've got in this handout a picture of the periodic table and um, and any notes that I take on these pages must be handwritten um, and you can use a tablet or uh, whatever method you want, but they must be handwritten unless you have an approved accommodation that says that handwriting is not something that you can do. And please let me know if that's the case. Uh, so you'll take notes. You'll submit it as a PDF, one PDF. Uh, you, know, you can't see where to submit it because it's my version. And it'll be worth 10 points. And I will say this. So to get full credit on most of the lecture outlines, you not only have to write the notes that I say, but there's usually at least one to two to three things that I don't even write down. I just speak about it and tell you to write it down. That's to make sure that you are listening to it as you go. Heads up. Uh, and this is my philosophy. So I'm going to tell you this now. Hopefully you're watching this because I want you to get full credit. Uh, I want you to do all the work. It is a lot of work. Um, and I want you to learn a lot. And that's how the class is oriented. Um, that's lecture outlines. Then you'll have a lab activity. And then at the end of the week, you'll have homework that's due. Each of these is a homework problem. Um, and each of these, you'll get four attempts. Only if you get one of them right, that's all you need to do. But say you get the second or third one right, you still only have to get one. These are all pool-based. So when you get a question, it says, uh, how many hours a week should you spend on class time, including lecture time and lab time? That's information that's in the lecture outline. So if you've got your lecture notes, you've written them down, and you'll be able to answer it. And most of these, I don't know about that one actually, but most of these are what are based on, or what are called pool questions. So if you do the question once, uh, you'll get a, one question. If you do the question again, let's see, this is a test, I didn't plan this. Oh, we got the same question. Well, you should be able to get different questions there. We'll see. Some of the pools are pretty shallow. Uh, I'm trying to see. Oh, and then um, and some of the pools are pretty deep, but that one must be pretty shallow. MC stands for multiple choice. FIL stands for file upload. File upload problems are problems that you have to write out your answers and then file upload. File upload problems are not graded automatically by Canvas. They're graded by me. I'll do my best to keep up with those. The multiple choice. Fib plus is fill in the blank with more than one blank. So that's the plus part. NUM is number based answer. And the Fib plus, the numbers, and the multiple choice are all graded by Canvas immediately. And then you can see at the end of week one, you have a quiz. All of these due dates are 11.59 PM. If there's a due date that's not uh, on the day that it says, if there's a due time that's not at 11.59, please let me know. Every once in a while, one slips through. And what you'll see is that week two is a re repeat of this. You got an introduction. You got a lecture outline. Here's your lab, first lab workshop. This is going to be uh, problem solving about scientific notation. Then you'll have a homework assignment. You can see homework assignment has eight, uh, two has 18 problems. Now you'll note that says homework two, PDF of your work. You must submit a PDF of every single asterisked problem. And you can see there's a lot of them. 
uh, and that's worth five points, where each of these problems is worth 0.5. And since there's 20 of them, that adds up to 10 other points, or well, 18 of them, close to 20. So for example, you're doing your homework and you get the multiple choice. Nothing, so it's just a question, nothing to write. You just put your answer down and done. Then you get to homework 02-03. It's a numerical answer and it has an asterisk, which means you must show that work and turn it in for PDF of your work. And where were we, two, three. Oh, and it has a tutorial video to help you do the problem. And uh, most of these, if not all of them, have similar problems that you're doing in the lecture outline. And then some of them just also have tutorial videos as well to help you out. So then some of them were fixed for fall 22. So I've got all my little notes here. This is a fill in the blank with one blank. Fib plus has more than one. So that's a little bit about what you're up against each week. And then you have a quiz on week two. And the quizzes, they are times. You uh, will see one question at a time. Uh, however, uh, you do also get four attempts for each quiz, and I only count your highest attempt. And so it continues. Now, uh, I go through, this is what's called the modules page, and put all your assignments. Some students prefer to go to the syllabus page, and for the syllabus page, it should show all of your assignments and due dates as well. In addition, it shows the percent assignments. Oof. <laughs> and it did this to me again. It, it reassigned assignments 50%. I'm going to go back and make that a zero and clean this up a little bit, but it will then add up to 100%. You can see all of the percents that go into your final grade right now and all of the assignments you need to do. If there's ever an assignment or a difference between what it says on the syllabus page and what it says is due on the modules page, please let me know and I will fix it. And that is an overview of taking this class. Please let me know if you have any questions. And I look forward to having you in class.